Hey, this is Keith from Every Time I Die. You're watching Under the Gun TV. Welcome to the first installment of Booze and the Fucker. Alright, so let's jump into this. Uh, from Parts Unknown comes out July 1st. Yes. Less than a month away. Yeah. How excited are you for the new album to drop? I'm very, very excited. It's been incubating for a while. We're ready to go. We're ready to let people hear it. So tell me about the new record. How does it contrast from X Lies? Uh, give us the whole synopsis on it. Um, it's a lot shorter than X Lies, I think, for total length of the whole thing. But um, it also feels like it was a lot more intense uh, of a process because uh, the last one, Joe Barisi, was very. Um, we, I feel like we had a lot more time and a lot more space to kind of come into our own as far as like modifying the songs that we were writing. But um, with this one, with Kurt, we were all very much on top of each other and it was a pretty pretty stressful situation, but I think it, it, it pulled out the kind of record that we wanted it to be. Cool. So the most interesting part to me so far, um, which shouldn't be the most interesting part, but I'm silly for this kind of thing. The album cover is, yeah. is trippy as hell. Yeah. Why'd you go with the buggy hippie album cover? What's the deal with that? I think it just suited Parts Unknown. Um, I think when a lot of people hear that, they tend to think of wrestling and, you know, some guy that just comes from a jungle and, you know, has no family or any history on record. But I think that uh, the idea of being from Parts Unknown could just mean absolutely anywhere unexpected. So I wanted to make uh, an unexpected sort of cover and layout design so we went with Joby Ford from the Bronx who's done incredible design work yeah um, and one of the first things I said was that I wanted a, a record cover like the Queen album cover where their faces were all on it I haven't seen one of those in a long time okay. so took taking that he kind of you know tripped it out and there we have it and you could have gone with the Death Row Records look though too. that's true we, we could have <laughs> done that too and, and it was it's actually a lot of people who saw it are like, where's the pink and where's the all, the eye logo? But I think that going with what's familiar isn't from parts unknown, you know, so you got to do got to do everything different. If you were to put a number of figure on it, how often would you say you guys actually shoot laser beams out of your eyes? 69 times a day. Okay. I'd just say, I'd use 69 for the number. Does that become day. daunting or? <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, it was, uh, it's laser eye surgery. We, <laughs> we all paid for laser eye surgery. And you've also been encouraging your fans to join the laser eye yeah. revolution, oh, too. Oh, boy. They're putting those lasers everywhere on their body. That's not just their eyeballs. See, so you know what the cool thing about that is, though? It's clever, but at the same time, that also really encourages your fans to get involved with the new record cycle it's, and all that it's stuff. Cool it's cool because it's really hard to get people involved with art like that. Yeah. Um, so to make them a part of the whole thing, I think, was a really good idea. And that was all Epitaph. And, um, yeah, it was awesome. But, yeah, boy, they are coming out all parts of their body. We're getting some weird submissions. So. But it's cool. So uh, the new track you guys dropped not too not too uh, long ago, Thirst. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, everyone on the internet is crazy about it. It seems to be getting a good reception. Now, I mean, a lot of people have been kind of comparing it to like the hot damn days and stuff yeah. like that. Um, would you say you kind of took it back old school, straightforward, hardcore? Yeah, thing? I think it just kind of happened like that because it was the first song we wrote for the new album. So we yeah. had two years of material to work with, and we were so excited that we just kind of like burst out of the gate you know and yeah. that's what just came to us first and obviously it's it's going to have influences from everything we've done because it's who we are you know so um but i think it worked out perfectly as a first release because it's short and it gives people a good idea what to expect from the album without mm -hmm. boring them so how frustrating does it get when like interviewers like me have to reference that it sounds like an, a song from 10 years ago I, I, not at all not at all no? because i think that uh if you try to stray too far away from what you've done in the past you're you're just doing yourself a disservice. I think that as long, mm -hmm. I mean, we're the same people, you know, we've yeah. grown a little bit. We're a little more aware of who we are and the things we've done. And we have a few different influences now, but yeah, we're still the guys that wrote hot damn. So that's still going to be in, a, in our genetic code, you know? Yeah. You know what the funny thing is? And I'm, I was going to bring this up later, but because you mentioned that I interviewed Jordan like a year ago, maybe mm -hmm. when you were on the Acacia strain tour yeah, yeah. with Vanna and stuff. Yeah. And that wasn't through this website. It was through my college newspaper. Okay. And I use the cliche question of like, oh, do you think, you know, your newer music is more mature? Yeah. And he goes, I think mature is the last way to describe us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I, I think that growing up is such a, f a fallacy, you know, that everyone's uh -huh. all, your music should mature as you, as you grow older. But uh, I think ch staying childlike is why we have an appeal at all anymore. Because I think that when people listen to our music or see us at a show, it kind of makes them feel nostalgic, you know? 
I think that's great. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you don't let it paralyze you in infancy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? As long yeah. as you're like not regressing. Right. You're not regressing, and you're yeah. not like we're not inspiring you to like shoplift or smoke cigarettes behind your parents' house. You know, what <laughs> I mean? all that stupid stuff. But if 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 listening to us is a release and takes you back to when times were more fun and simpler, that's what music's supposed to do. So you don't have to mature. All right, I got a little off topic, but let's go no, back to okay. Thirst. Okay. The video for that song is fucking ridiculous. It's pretty good. It involves masturbation. Yeah. On more than one occasion. Yeah. Lighting fires. Yep. Drinking 40 ounces. Yeah. Now, how often do these elements go into playing a basement show or an Every Time I Die show? The thing about it is, is those two people are our friends. Their names are Dan and Bobby. And uh, that's how they are every day. So it's when we came up with the idea, uh, uh, Doug and I came up with the idea of two videos, one leading into the other. Mm-hmm. Let's like do this Beavis and Butthead thing where they get <laughs> to the party and then the party goes on without them. Uh, I was like, well, these guys are perfect. These two guys I know are going to be perfect. And they're not even acting. I mean, that's seriously what they're Just, like. Yeah, they're day to day. It's so awesome. Yeah, it's so awesome. Uh, I know... The album has some uh, eclectic roots in it. I mean, you worked with with uh, Kurt from Converge, uh, one of the guys from Gaslight Anthem, yeah. is featured on the record. So, how did you go about these collaborations? And and, and you know, they're kind of all over the spectrum. But yeah. you wanted that, right? I definitely wanted that. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the uh, the idea of working with Kurt has just been uh, it's always been something we wanted to do, and for some reason, it never worked out. And this time, it just fell into place so perfectly. And I I feel like maybe it never worked out because it wasn't supposed to yet now is the time you know and it it will manifest when it's appropriate and now a, a collaboration with kurt it, it's definitely all the conditions are optimal for it it just feels like the right time in our lives to do something with them and um as far as like the the cameos um i don't know just uh, honestly it was just got uh, the the one with brian from gaslight was just a weird talk i was having with a buddy at a bar one time and gaslight anthem came on the jukebox and we thought yeah this guy would be great to get on the record so I reached out to him when, this, when it, uh, the part was written, and I didn't intend to write it for him, but I thought that his voice would complement it perfectly, so I sent it to him, and he sent it back totally different, and it was just a million times better. That's cool. why he's as great as he is, you know? Cool. Um, All right, so let's talk about Warp Tour. You're going on again this summer. Yeah. How many times have you done it before, and why did you decide that Warp Tour was, was the right tour for this new album? This will be the fifth time we've done it, I think. War Tour is just, it's just perfect. I don't know. I, I, it's something that you get to experience, luckily, when you're young, mm-hmm. maybe once or twice. And for some reason, we've been gelling so well with the Warp Tour crowds and with everybody that, that runs Warp Tour with the other bands we're on with. And, it, you know, we always seem like the sore thumb that sticks out, but it's not really true. I mean, this year's Terror's on it, Parkway Drive's on it, Straight from the Path is on it. And, uh, you know, you get to play for new kids in new environments and uh, people that have never heard you before might be walking by and want to stop in and see what's up. And it's great. It's a great thing to do. So aside from doing a ton of press, I know you were on a train for many hours today mm-hmm. and bouncing around New York City. Aside from that, have you been able to rest up for Warp yeah. Tour? Because I've seen on your Twitter that you're a fan of cold beers and uh-huh. mowing your lawn yeah, and your different lo- kinds of work. grass. Very, very domesticated, yeah. So are you consciously trying to rest up and do your little peace of mind stuff before getting in the yeah. room? Because you're not 22. I mean, no. You're like, what, 35 now? I'm 34, yeah. 34, so. Yeah, resting up is important. But, yeah, I, I do feel like I've been training. I mean, I lost like 30 pounds. Yeah, I, good, yeah, man. I've been, uh, been hitting the gym, been meditating. I just feel like I'm, I'm in a better spot than I ever was, and I'm, I'm really ready for this. Last time we were on Warp Tour, it really took me by surprise. I was not mentally prepared for it at all. Uh, but now I, I, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to going into it. So do you ever have like a trouble kind of maintaining that intensity? I mean, the last time I saw you was a year ago. So I'm guessing you were 33. It was yeah. in, you know, Clifton Park, upstate yeah. control, but you were a fucking maniac. Yeah, I, I don't mean, have a problem maintaining the intensity because it never feels like a show. It's never like, you know, where I have to put on makeup and put on a different costume and <laughs> go play a part. No gimmick. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not. I don't I'm not switching over into, into show mode Keith or anything we're yeah. not switching into show mode every time I die it's like we're hanging out and then we go h- hang out on the stage and you know live the moment for as many moments as we can and then uh, get ready to do it again so it's no it's never it's never like I 
overexert myself. I, I do exactly what comes naturally, and luckily that's been enough to keep people excited. Cool. All right, the timing of this interview is perfect because right now the Rangers are in the Stanley Cup yeah. for the first time since 94. Mm -hmm. Jordan told me last year how he's a huge Rangers fan and not too keen on the Buffalo Sabres. He said that? No, I'm just oh, messing right. with you. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Rangers being in the Cup, being from Buffalo? Are you are you rooting against them or are you rooting for them? I'm, I mean, East Coast, I'm for them. Good. I'm rooting for them. I mean, this is, this is a good rivalry, I think. It's better than, you know, if it was Montreal. I mean, Montreal's a great team, too, but I... I feel like two American teams, East versus West, is really really the way to go. Yeah. Lundqvist is just extraordinary, too. What do you think, seven games? No, four. Four? four. four. I'm, I think you guys are going to sweep it. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, that would be nice. Yeah. I'm just saying that until I do an interview in L.A., and then I'm going to say that uh, they're going to sweep yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was talking to, to Jordan, I had mentioned how all these bands are doing the 10-year anniversary tour and, mm -hmm. you know, what do you think about doing a hot damn one? Is like, would you be into that? And, and basically what his response was that you guys had kicked around the idea, but to him it kind of seemed like, like a cash grab or some, yeah. some kind of novelty just, yeah. to, just to get kids in there because you play a lot of those songs anyway. Uh -huh. But then I know that you had rehearsed that album in its entirety to go play the All-Star Tour. So yeah. what, what, ended, what ended up happening with Well, uh, we compromised by doing both. Uh, we played a full set as we normally would, and then we played Hot Damn front to back. So okay. It was two shows a night. That's if awesome. If you wanted to stick around to see Hot Damn, you could. Yeah. If you just wanted to see it every time at iShow, you could. Now, so how, how draining was that? That was easily the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I mean, it was a full, like, hour and a half of go, 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 go. Was it worth it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here's my last thing. So, obviously, you've got the diehard fans of Every Time I Die that have been there, you know, for a decade. You want to pick up some new fans on Warped Tour this summer. Mm -hmm. But uh, just... For example, like some of the buddies that I grew up going to shows with, you know, they're not all into the music scene like they used yeah. to be. So I was like, oh, I'm going to interview every time I die tonight. And they're like, oh, that's awesome. But they've been kind of out of the music world yeah. for a little bit. So, like, if you were to see a fan who's like, man, I haven't bumped every time I die since 05 in my car playing Kill the Music. Yeah. How would you pitch in a, in a short way why they got to listen to this new record? Um, I, I think I, I pretty much said, you know, already that it's just... It just is the exact kind of music that got you into this kind of music, you know? That's a good I mean, thing. I think that it's the, the stuff that reminds you of why this music was important to you when you were young, and it could still be, be very important, important to you. Now. And I, I think that I'm not to my own horn because I am blessed and grateful beyond anything, um, but I think that it's, it's really something um, to be proud of almost like it's beyond us somehow we've been able to keep doing this and keep having uh this energy to our music and you know these guys when they bring songs to the table it fucking amazes me that i'm i yeah. get to be in this band that i like so much so yeah i think that if if you have forgotten why you liked music in the first place i think this new every time i die record will remind you for sure cool Hey guys, this is Keith from Every Time I Die. You've been watching Under the Gun TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to finish my drink now. It's so smooth. It goes down so smooth. <laughs>